Thank you for joining us. This is Film Talk Weekly. I'm Castle Searcy, and I'm here with Laura. I forgot to ask you how to say your last <laughs> name. Laura John. John Stoyberg. Stoyberg. That's what I was gonna say. Yes. <laughs> and right now, you where are you right now? It's tropical. Yeah, right now I'm in Hanoi. Quite rainy, um, but yeah, I'm okay. over here. And you are from Sweden. Yes, yes, I am. Okay, and Laura is here. She, in addition to being a world traveler right now, you are a voiceover actress. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mostly do uh, dub children's programs, uh, but I also do like uh, act in radio drama plays too and stuff like that. What kind of plays? Uh, radio drama. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I think everyone thinks they can do this job. I don't know if it's just <laughs> me, but, I, but you know, people say voiceover actress. And I feel like so many people say, I could do that. Or maybe I should try that. But like, what does it take? Like, what are they looking for? Or how did... So, it de I mean, it depends a little bit on what you're doing. But I think obviously you have to like in dubbing, you have to be able to synchronize like what you're saying to the original movie. Uh, and uh, well, basically imitate the character that you're seeing on the on the TV. And also just uh, to be able to be like a little bit crazy, I think. <laughs> okay, okay. That's a, that's a fun requirement. So <laughs> you do dubbing mainly yeah okay so you're dubbing in swedish exactly so i'm hearing the original language usually english and then when i'm talking in swedish yeah okay and so like how when did you start doing this so my first like voice acting job, I, I got to be in a radio dr drama play when I was five years old. Uh, and then at like seven or eight, I started dubbing. So you could say that I've been a voice actress for like 15 years, but done dubbing for 12. And how did you get that first radio voice actress? So actually my, my parents both work with radio drama. So it's kind of because of them that I got into this industry. Um, they had like, um, yeah, I got the opportunity to like uh, do uh, an open casting for dubbing. And then I just continued from there. So uh, I don't know if we have anything called radio drama here. I, I'm guessing I know what it is. Is it like a soap opera on the radio or something? Or, it's or... like a play, just like a, okay. a play at a theater, but you do it radio, okay. kind of. <laughs> you, have, you have stations that do this? Yeah, Over so okay. uh, I've been, for instance, I've been in uh, radio drama in like the Swedish uh, radio, uh, do radio drama plays. So they have like a department for that. Uh, so, it's basically, basically like fic fiction and it could be anything. It could be humor. It could be like for children, for um, adults, for like just books, anything really. That's a great idea. I mean, I'm sure we have it somewhere, but it kind of sounds like a book on tape, but in the car. Yeah. You know, yeah, sure. But on the radio, I mean. Um, yeah. Interesting. Okay. And your parents do this? Yeah, so they both uh, have been like directing and producing radio drama uh, for a long time, uh, and also worked. Uh, my my mom has worked with um, like children's a lot of like children's programs as well. So I kind of like grown up with that. Maybe you could say. Okay, have you been on television? Like not on television, but I've been on the radio. Uh, okay. So in Sweden, we have this this like a Christmas show in December every day uh, an episode airs so it's like uh, a short episode every day as kind of like an 
countdown to Christmas. And then on Christmas, that obviously the last episode. Uh, and in 2021, I got to be play the, the leading role in that one. Um, so yeah, I've been been like on on the radio <laughs> like that, which was really really cool. So you've probably seen other people audition for these things. Like, how do they choose? What's a good voice for radio? That's a good question. Honestly, it depends a lot on the director. Uh, and the, um, I would say like the, the project they're doing, uh, they're always like looking for some, they have something in mind usually, like you want some, often maybe like somebody whose uh, voice is really, really high pitched or really low or can be like, say different characters. So often you look for somebody who can do a lot of like different voices maybe and, and like, uh, be both super happy and like that but also like something that also you know uh, <laughs> yeah exactly um and i guess a, i guess the voice that you you don't want to turn off the radio <laughs> i don't know what i mean way. i feel like i can't tell what my voice sounds like you know like or i i feel like people can't no, and most people are really afraid to listen to their own voice. Yes. But I, so I'm like the the exception because I'm like so used to it now. But uh, I remember in the beginning, you're, you're so not used to it. So you all, like often you think it's, oh, this is terrible. Is this what I sound like? Because yeah. you have your your inner voice, like what you yeah. think you look, hear or sound like, not the same. <laughs> yes, That's why I never listen to the show. No, I can't. I really? Can't. I can't. No, I've never listened to it. I can't oh, listen to it. You myself. should. But maybe I'll get there eventually. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Like, I think about what I sound like sounds nothing like what I think I sound like. So I don't know how someone gets the wherewithal to say, I want to try to be a voice actress. Like, if, if, I feel like it takes a lot of confidence to obviously, you have, you know, you were raised in that environment. Yeah, for me, it's not been like that dramatic, maybe because of that. But also, I was so, I think I was so young that I didn't really think a lot about it. Um, but most, like, first and foremost, it's so much fun to do it. So I think it's it's mostly because I think a lot of people want to go into the industry because it's so much, like, fun to play different characters and to, to, be like in the in the these animated movies and tv shows and right yeah everything and do you find yourself getting expressive like is it helpful like if they're oh my god yes you, like because you see like when people are um doing voice for cartoons like they almost look like the cartoon when they're doing it Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I do a lot of gestures, um, and I always end up. I don't even think about it nowadays, but I always end up like uh, with the ex same expression as the as the character. And sometimes I can just find myself like running and dancing, and my arms are all <laughs> over the place <laughs> because that's what they're doing there, you know? Right. <laughs> and you you mainly do kids programming uh yeah mostly mm -hmm. so so someone has like do you have an agent uh no 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 i don't okay so someone has classified Sweden, you as doing child voiceover work though right yeah so basically there are like some dubbing studios that do uh, like do kind of all of the dubbing in, in sweden uh, and so you can go to a W studio, you can do a um, voice test and then they, they save your voice and maybe they got, get like a new project and they think, hmm, maybe she would be a good, like a good fit for this role. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think, I think that's how it works. And we're back with Laura John Stoyberg, voice actress from Sweden, Stockholm, Sweden. I'm Castle. 
This is Film Talk Weekly. I'm in New York right now. Laura is in Hanoi, Vietnam. We're 12 hours apart. It's yesterday there for Laura. We realized <laughs> as we signed up to do this. Um, yeah, so you were talking about all the fun projects you get to work on. Tell us, tell me about some of those. So, for example, last year I was in a, uh, in a movie called My Fairy Troublemaker, which was, uh, I think, a really fun, fun uh, animated movie for children. Uh, and I got to be this girl that moved to the city. Uh, and she didn't like it there. And all of a sudden, uh, a tooth fairy comes into her apartment. And then it's just trouble from there. A lot, a lot of things going on. Was it uh, fe but feature, feature length? Sorry? Was it feature length? Or how, um, how long was it? Oh, uh, it was like one one to two hours i think so okay like, yeah 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 okay. <laughs> uh so it's like a, a cinema movie mm -hmm. and uh so it's i think it's so much fun dubbing because usually i never know what projects i'm going to be doing uh so sometimes you do a casting for a movie or for a tv show uh and you get the part and sometimes it's just like you just get 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 apart like um maybe get sent you have two hours in uh, of work to do in this uh, movie or this tv show or or anything uh and you just go into the studio like oh okay and for example this movie i was really pleasantly surprised because it was it's quite funny i think <laughs> when i was doing it i was sitting there laughing and really enjoying the movie and is this one that you were just sent to work on versus auditioning? Actually, this one I think was auditioning, if mm -hmm. I remember co correctly. Uh, it's it's more common with the TV shows that airs like maybe those shows that have like hundreds of seasons and episodes. Uh, mm -hmm. It's more common that you don't audition for those kind of uh, projects. And so, describe the location, like. You can't do this from home, right? You have to go into a studio. Yeah. So I have to go into the studio and I have this um, the sound uh, sound engineer uh, and a director. Or sometimes the sound engineer is the di director. So they're doing two jobs at the same time. So usually, so I'm, I'm in a studio and the sound engineer is over there. And in my studio, I have headphones. Um, so I can listen to the original language. And then what I see in front of me is two screens. One screen that's playing the movie with the original character and the original language. And then I have another screen closer to me with the manuscript in Swedish. So, uh, and then also a time code. So what I do is that I see the movie and hear what they're saying. And at the same time, I'm looking at the manuscripts and I try to synchronize everything and also imitate the the expression of the original character. That sounds hard. It sounds really difficult and really complex, but but it's really not. Do you have like <laughs> it's a, more like a do you have like a second in between or a few seconds in between to say your part or you're just trying to do it at the exact same time? I always try, you always try to do it at the exact same time, but luckily enough, the sound engineers can yes, do I, their work. I was, ho <laughs> I was hoping magic. that. I was hoping that. Yeah, like, yeah, I, would, yeah. I would want a few seconds <laughs> so I could, yeah, yeah. you know, and then can't you, can't you just fix that in post or whatever? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And they're, and they're so fantastic, all the sound engineers I've worked, worked with, and they can, they can say like, uh, oh, we can just jump right into half of this line and I can make it sound like all natural later and so usually you have a little room to to make mistakes so probably there will be a point where you transition into like a teenager voice or an adult voice yeah uh so yeah yeah, yeah. you the the rules uh so the uh, the roles that you get are very different from like when you're a kid and when you get older. 
but it happens that I sometimes play like a three-year-old nowadays too. Oh, really? You just have to change your voice. What, yeah. What is that? <laughs> Can you tell us what that sounds like? Um, some is a lot of da, 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 da. <laughs> like, <laughs> really high pitch. A lot of <laughs> those kind of <laughs> cool. kind of sounds. Right. Yeah, it's usually like an animal baby for some reason. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but if somebody has to do those those two. Right. right. <laughs> and those um, th those are actually very fun. Um, what are some other projects you've worked on? Maybe that we would know in America. I know you you've dubbed some American TV shows as well. Yes, yeah, so I've been in like a lot of different tv shows and um i i've done i i, I was in the intro of spongebob uh and i've done some like uh lego parts of like the lego universe um tv shows um and also but this is my might be a swedish one um but it was a really cool project uh it was called uh ronja robbersauter that's like a really famous book in Sweden and Studio Ghibli has uh, done Totoro and all of those amazing mm -hmm. movies. Um, they actually did that book into um, a TV series and I got to play Ron um, Ronya in that, which was really cool. Uh, so maybe somebody who likes anime has, said, has watched that one. Okay. <laughs> and so you only dub in Swedish, right? Yeah, apart from when like a small some some line sometimes is like trying to speak French. Okay, <laughs> okay. And and SpongeBob, you're in the intro, like the intro song. Yeah, but when I think about it, maybe it was just uh, one movie. But I I do have a memory of like screaming like SpongeBob SquarePants. And you say that in Swedish. Yeah. Can you so say it? Camp. <laughs> okay, great. Um, let's see. I, I'm so curious about all of how this works. Uh, so if you're dubbing, like that's your specialty. And it seems like it takes a really smart person who's focused to be able to do that. Um, like, do you also want to just do you like animation like is that is that something you really? audition, audition for are they different things like how does that work well like the different mm, dubbing projects well like i see the dubbing and then i mean i guess in sweden if you were doing animation is it called dubbing if you're you're just doing voiceover work like if you're just voicing a cartoon, I mean it's always dubbing if you're if you're replacing the original language with the uh, with a new language. Okay. So it it doesn't really matter if it's animation like animated or if it's a live action movie, um, as long as it's in another language, and then you turn it into from from mean like into Swedish, then I think it would be called dubbing. Um, whereas maybe in the radio drama place or in when you're reading a book or something, then it's not uh, not not really dubbing. It's more it's only, it's more only something I would say. So, do you look into work where you're just doing it in Swedish, or do you like the dub? Do you do you like the dubbing? Um, so everything I do is now is in Swedish. Um, but I, I love all of the like different voice acting stuff. Uh, I mostly do dubbing and I really, I, I truly think that it's really fun to do it. Um, but I would be so open to, to like reading, maybe like reading books, like audiobooks or voice acting and different things too. So it's more like, well, I just done dubbing the most. Recently, my boss gave me some feedback and it included a couple of things that 
I think he was afraid to tell me, but he said that I smacked when I started my sentences. And I'm so grateful that he told me this. Like, I must say, when I start my questions, I'm like, so, or something. And I'm so grateful that he told me this because this is something I would never know. Like, no, a lot of those things you never notice until you either hear a recording of yourself or a director just tells you that you're doing this. Uh, and maybe it's better if you don't. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I, I don't listen to myself. Like, th that's exactly. probably a problem. I should do that. <laughs> no, but 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 actually, like, you do a lot of things. Everyone does a lot of things that you, you would never notice otherwise. And I, I remember this time when I was um, when I was dubbing this this movie, I actually got got a got a call after finishing everything. They said, you have to come into the studio once, uh, one time. It's just for one line. So I had to go back for just one line. And it was because I accidentally sounded a little bit too, like, harsh. Because in Swedish, um, you can say I in a very, like, specific manner. And it, it can sound sometimes a little bit, like, a little bit harsh. Uh, so they said, no, this does not work. You have to come back. It was just because because of one syllable. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, I mean, other feedback I got, I I if I say ah, uh, like I need to breathe mm. instead of saying ah. Uh, um, yeah. Or um. I feel like I notice when people say um. I don't. What is um in Swedish? Like, do you have that problem? Like, is there like some kind of what are the there's word fillers that we use like. Oh, I think like, 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 like is bad. Yeah, like is there bad. are some, some of those phrases are uh, common in, in Sweden too. You can say maybe uh, liksom or uh, um, it's just eh, eh. Yeah. And sometimes when you're in a dialogue, you can, you don't notice that you're, you're like um, saying mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, a lot. Yeah. That's like things you never really think I about. Probably but do when that you that. hear it. Mm -hmm. but I think mm -hmm. everybody does <laughs> yeah everybody does and I'm sure like you've probably been trained like I mean even though you've been doing this since you were five have you had training as well uh I haven't I, I would say like my training may maybe I have been more like just doing it um and in radio something that you usually say is that you can you can act as though you have a smile on your face and then your voice becomes a lot like warmer and happier and a little bit calmer. Um, so those kind of things I can always carry with me. But my problem is usually <laughs> every director has to say, okay, a little bit slower <laughs> because okay. I talk so like so rapidly. <laughs> okay. What are some other like things that you're not supposed to do when you're voice acting or you should well, well i i think i mentioned that i i move around a lot but you you should never move um you you can never move so that your clothes make sounds or the chair makes sounds or something because then you have to do a retake or you get out so of it's breath, always... probably oh my god yes oh my god when i did uh vanya robber's daughter there were so many scenes where she was running in the forest. So first of all, I was standing up then, because usually I'm sitting down. Um, but I was standing up and I, I went like this and just <laughs> was running so much that I got so out of breath and so dizzy. And I was like, I have to take a break. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to faint. Right. Well, you're probably <laughs> supposed to be fake out of breath. Uh, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then you actually get out of breath right, from right. being fake out of breath yeah yeah <laughs> and so do you have to wear quiet quiet Sorry. clothes when you're in the studio um usually yes or yeah. or just be very very still uh-huh um any other tips or tricks for us Ooh. Hmm. i know the smiling one like yep. anytime, anytime i've worked where i answered the phone i know you're all you're always supposed to smile Okay. Would you or could you like do this full time? I guess you could, but I don't think that it's so, it's not that common. 
That was my part. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's the Oscar um, music. I play the Oscar music. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Amazing. Um, no, but uh, I, I don't think it's that common to do it like full time. Uh, but it is common for actors to also vo voice act and dub. Okay. Would yeah. you would you want to do it full time? No, I I don't think I would want to do it full time. Um, but part time is is very fun. But I think it could be a little bit too much if I do it full time. Um, I'm curious. Like, is there in addition to voice acting, is there anything else you have to do? Do you have do are they recording like the sound of your feet or like is there anything else going on in the room? Um, yeah, actually, like surprisingly enough, even though it's just um, you're doing just uh, voice acting, sometimes you do have to make sounds. Uh, and I actually sometimes get to wear like clothes, even though no one's watching me. Uh, so like, I did like video. costume, like a costume. Yeah, actually, yeah. I, okay. yeah, I did the uh, what one project I had to get. Um, I had glasses on <laughs> to make me feel a little bit more nerdy. And I got to wear a leather jacket the entire, like, every time I recorded, because I was supposed to be an insect, a tiny, tiny insect. And I had to wear the jacket and move my arms like this, so <laughs> that it would sound like I was an insect walking like this. <laughs> and this is at the same time that you're watching the show, reading the scripts, you're doing all the, uh, yeah. and all at the same time. <laughs> uh, usually yes all at the same time this time uh, fortunately I didn't have to watch anything because it was just me talking uh, so I didn't have to synchronize okay. otherwise that would be like a lot more work uh, okay. but it was quite a lot of work to be like I was also on all fours sometimes to be <laughs> to sound like I was a really really small ant or some type of insect uh, <laughs> so it was a little bit difficult <laughs> No, no. So this is like a, a, a part-time job or, or oh, something I do okay. on the side, the dubbing. Okay. okay. Um, so usually it's just like, a, yeah, it depends on the projects, of course, but uh, usually just a couple of hours a, a week. Is it something you can do from any location as long as there's a recording studio? I mean, it would require like a lot of really good um like uh, recording what's it called like tools i don't know um but really like all of those things i think but maybe it would be possible it's just a lot easier when you have like the help of a sound engineer and right a really good microphone and everything right right yeah um what are the other jobs you do when you're not voice acting? Um, so I've been working, I've been working in a store. I've been working in like restaurants. I've been, um, I was the uh, executive assistant to a, a CEO of a company too. So I'm like assisting. I did a lot of like different things, but uh, the only thing that has like been really with me the whole entire life is actually voice acting. I've always done it like throughout the school and uh, uh, always. Does anyone ever recognize you? No, not really. <laughs> 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 but I think also, uh, but but I think my voice is also quite different when I when I dub because sometimes right. like the my friends, the few times that they've like heard me on something, uh, they always said like is this you <laughs> because yeah. i sound like really really different right so maybe um if i would walk around being like yay we did it all the time <laughs> maybe people would recognize yeah, yeah. me <laughs> um are you working on anything now or you're just you're traveling right now you're on hiatus you're on sabbatical yeah so uh right now i'm just i'm just traveling around um if i could do it like um remotely it would be amazing to be able to dub yeah. but, but right now i don't have the opportunity to do that so right now i'm like taking a little break from doing it and just uh 
trying to see the world and travel around as much as I can. Cool. Um, do you have any stories from your experiences? Stories like anything embarrassing or weird mm -hmm. or like. <laughs> Oh, I remember when I was a kid that I was really afraid to like scream, like fully scream, because I didn't want to, like, you know, it's embarrassing. So I was more like, ah, which is really, like, really bad if the scene is somebody like jumping yeah. off of the cliff, you know, yeah, they yeah. want like a real like primal scream. Uh, so I was always really like, oh, timid to do it. Uh, I, I didn't really want to do it yeah yeah <laughs> but then after some times uh after some time i realized that okay they really want me to like fully scream and then when when i started doing it you just find like so many different screams within yourself that you didn't know existed and sometimes it could be like releasing like really good for the emotions if you're angry you can go into the studio scream a little bit and then everything's fine i bet it's something most of us <laughs> are not either we don't want to do you don't want to be in a position to do it no if you do it you're gonna you know you're not allowed to do it you know no so, exactly yeah, you're probably one of the least stressed people since you they should have like screaming booths they probably do somewhere. They you know? should. They like should. Yeah. Place where you can go and like break things, which I'm not a fan yeah. of. I don't like breaking things and I don't like seeing no. things broken. But, no. But <laughs> I went to actually in Santa Fe. I was there in October and I went to a site, Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. And the, in the museum, there was an amazing exhibit and I'm forgetting his name right now he's a brilliant mm -hmm. artist everyone's homework is to look it up but it's he's mm -hmm. I think still at Site Santa Fe but basically uh the exhibit tells mm -hmm. you to kneel on a cushion and scream as loud as you can and oh. Oh. me and my friend Anna we were the, she was there from New York we sat down to do it and we couldn't do it like we were just like hey, one two three ah you know and we just couldn't do it and so we're leaving and we were telling the person at the desk how we couldn't do it and she's like come on come with me and we all went and three did it together and i'm like so proud of us but it was like really hard you know yeah like yeah it it's, a is. Scream, it's a scream at the top of your lungs you know like and it, yeah it was like nearly impossible but it's such a scream, yeah you know you're so yeah. not used to it like screaming that loudly and like yeah. really screaming from the like that from your toes off. Yeah. well when you're a kid your whole life they tell you not to scream you know <laughs> like, exactly <so>. exactly <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's yeah. another thing that I, it's fun about dubbing that you kind of like get to be a, a kid again because most of the roles are you know they're kids shows so they're us yeah. usually about kids for kids yeah so you get to like step into the the world of a kid again uh, and i think that's so much fun and also like yeah it, it, it's I, I think it's good for you to be like a child sometimes and just be in a world where there's a problem and then you fix it and then everything's like really good again and everything's yeah. just rainbows and it sounds great it sounds great <laughs> yeah. you know yeah <laughs> want to stay the, there forever <laughs> yeah um do you have any advice for people trying to get into this business? You've probably seen a lot and, you know, had a lot of, you've had a lot of experience. And I think a lot of these things are the same, whether it's in the United States or Sweden, like, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Pro yeah, probably. Uh, the funny thing is, though, that I've almost never seen another dubbing actor because you never see each other. Oh, so, right. uh, I, so I've almost never, like, someone else do it but for my own experience yeah. i would say that just um contact, like contact the stu the dubbing studio do a voice test have fun like just be uh, just ha yeah have fun let it all go um be as childish as curious as uh, crazy as you can uh and then just i don't know scream it out laugh it out cry it out yeah just go with it <laughs> yeah i think this is like a this could be a new like activity for people like improv or you know yeah <laughs> yeah 
Okay, cool. Um, so we follow you anywhere or watch it, go to, we should fly to Sweden and watch your shows. <laughs> and I'm sure we can put, if we put things on in America and Swedish, if we chose Swedish as the language, we'd probably hear it, right? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe, yeah. good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for spending time with us. And this is just a fascinating topic. It sounds like such a cool, cool job. And yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been yeah. really fun. Yeah. All right, everyone. This is Laura John Stoyberg of Stockholm, Sweden, visiting us from Hanoi, Vietnam. I'm Castle Film Talk Weekly with the Santa Fe International Film Festival. We will see you next week.